Hi there. So if you're there, if you could just um, post a comment, that'd be wonderful. Lovely to see you all. Just give it a few minutes for people to join. Okay. okay. Just waiting to see. Oh, great. Hi, if you're there, if you could just drop a note in the comments, that would be wonderful. Just say uh, where you're from. Ah, cool. Hi there, Radhika. Hi there, Kirpa. Lovely to see you guys here, bright and early. So, if you're there, um, just drop us a note of where you're from. And, uh, We'll just give a couple of minutes for people to join in. So which part of the world are you from? Just say hi and which part of the world you're from. Hi Raj, hi Vishal, great to see you guys. Ah, good you thoughts, lovely to see you guys. Looking forward to your session later on. Ah, Vera's online, wonderful. Made my day. Brilliant. We'll just give it one more minute and then we'll start off proper. So, If, you're, if you've just joined, if you could just put um, a quick hi in the comments, that would be wonderful. Um, great to hear from you. Okie dokie. Here we go. So namaste. Good morning and welcome to Vera's Virtual Extravaganza. We have a glorious sunny day here in London. In the words of Bill Withers, it's going to be a lovely day. A day filled with wonderful activities. I'm Shane Shah, a happiness coach with Happy Life Habits. And we thank you all for joining us at this event in aid of Vera and other people like him, like Sahara, who are suffering from rare blood disorders which require stem cell donations from a, a matching donor. Here in the UK, we're all aware of the government's message, stay home, save the NHS, save lives. For our campaign, it's increase donors on the register, increase the charges of match, save lives. That's what we're about. And the four ways you can get involved in helping us with that is, one, register to become a stem cell sorry, a stem cell donor by doing a swab test. Two, share the information that you're learning here and raise this awareness and let more and more people know. Three, donate as much as you can. And we appreciate the donations that you've already given and really helped hit up um, various milestones. And four, enjoy the day. So let's begin. Would you like to know the secret of long lasting happiness? Come a little closer. Say yes on the chat if you'd like to hear the secret of long lasting happiness. So as I mentioned, I'm Shailene, a happiness coach. My job is to take people from the sad face to the smiley face. And I'm grateful for the honor and the privilege of being the first session today on this amazing day of events. Um, my intention is to start the day happy and positive and to, for that happy, positive energy to be carried throughout the day with all the other activities going on right through to the end, post 10 o'clock, 
and beyond. And every act that's going to be on today and all of you are helping to add to that positive energy. So that's what we're working with. So I'd like to ask you a question. Right now, on a scale from zero to 10, where zero is not happy at all, and 10 is really happy, but not using the number seven, where are you on that scale? And if you could write that in the comments, zero to 10, where is your happiness level, but not using the number seven? If you could drop that in the comments, that would be lovely. So zero to 10, zero, not happy at all, 10, really happy. Where are you on that scale? If you just drop that into um, the comments, that would be wonderful. I myself am about eight or eight and a half years allowed to use fractions. It was a little bit lower early in the day, but lots of excitement and energy has helped push it up to eight, eight and a half, and I'm sure will surpass that. So, yep, just drop in the uh, comments what your happiness figure is if you're able to. That's wonderful. I am not seeing any come through as yet. I'm just going to check. Oh, sorry. A little bit of scrolling required. Wow, there is a 10 today. I've got lots of eights. I've got some. Yeah, actually, it's lots of eights and tens. That's awesome. Brilliant. So with whatever the number you have, just make a note of it. Everyone's number is different, and that's fine. And the beauty of it is we can learn to increase that number. We can learn to up the number um, that we have. What are the things which make you happy? Just have a think about that and drop that in the notes. What is it that's giving you your number eight or giving you your number 10? So what are the different things that make you happy? Is it the glorious sunshine? Is it a full fun day filled with activities? Is it time with family, time with friends, lovely food? A chance to spend some time in nature, to learn new stuff, to dance, to sing? What are the things that make you happy? Brilliant. So now the next question is, what are the things which impact your happiness level? What makes it not reach as high as it could be? And these things could be, and often are, things like, sorry, one moment, things like stress, anxiety, worries. These are the things which can impact our happiness levels. And the world is based on a negative bias. So we see the news, it's often very negative. Our job is to change that and turn it around and look and focus on the positive. So that's what we're going to work with. I'm going to share four important things with you today. The first is Vera turned four recently. So four plays an important role in what we're going to share today. Secondly, Vera's name has four letters in it. Then he's in a nuclear family of four, mum, dad, and his sister Suhani. So there's four of them. Today is the 8th of May. It's four days after May the 4th, which was Star Wars Day. And Star and Wars have four in each of those words, Star and Wars. And episode four, the original Star Wars, was A New Hope. And hope has four letters, which is really important for all of us as well. Hope. So those are the things I want you to remember. So remember those four things and keep an eye out for, as we share, um, the sets of four that we have. Parents, I'm going to teach your kids some four letter words. Do not worry. They're not scary and naughty ones. They're good ones. Like the word good. So on the chat, I'd like to ask if you can answer this question. For those of you who are under the age of 15, um, what do you want to be when you grow up, when you're older? What do you want to be when you grow up? And for those of you who are above the age of 15, think back to when you were below the age of 15. What did you want to be when you grew up? 
just take a moment to think about what you want to be when you grow up if you're very young and if you're a little bit older what did you want to be when you grew up when you were younger and just share that on uh, the chat for me when i was eight nine ten eleven um that sort of age i wanted to be a detective to do investigations break to work out codes and investigate and be a detective what kind of things do, do you guys want to be ah trish has said she wants to be um, an ice cream van when she was super young the one with the noise going around and all the kids coming out brilliant we've got astronaut oh man that's out of this world Broshti. brilliant what else what did you want to be when you grew up Arab wants to be a youtuber <laughs> fantastic and then wants to be a photographer so these are some of the very young kids that we had under the age of 10 or thereabouts with lovely aspirations brilliant some of the older guys what did you want to be when you were younger? Sangeeta said a train driver, but too late now. It's never too late, Sangeet. Someone else done. Punami said a ballet dancer. Jay wanted to be a pilot. Fantastic. Lovely shares. This same question was asked to um, a class of young students, and they were given the homework as an assignment to say, you know, write down what do you want to be when you grow up. And the kids went home, did their assignment, brought it into school. And the teacher called up and, and they put the same things like you guys, a doctor, um, a postman, a train driver, an astronaut, a nurse, um, an accountant, all of these things they put down. And uh, the teacher you know, looked at uh, the responses and saw that one boy had put down the, an answer and he called that boy up and he said, John, please come here. And he said, you know, for the assignment, what do you want to be when you grow up? You've put the word, you know, you've put the answer, happy. Please explain. And the little boy, John, said, from, whenever, from when I was very young, my mother said, the key to life is happiness. And the teacher looked at the young boy, John, and said, son, you don't understand the assignment. And the little boy looked at the teacher and said, sir, you don't understand life. And that young person was John Lennon of the Beatles and the of, um, right lecture of um, Imagine. So happiness is the key to life. Happiness is what we're all after. Mahatma Gandhi has shared that happiness is when what we see, what we say, and what we do are in harmony. So what we see, what we say, and what we do are in harmony. That's what happiness is. Sonia Libyomiski, she's a science of happiness researcher. And what she's shared is happiness is the experience of joy, contentment, or positive well being combined with the sense that one's life is good, meaningful, and worthwhile. So it's more than a fleeting emotion, happiness. It's an all rounded well being. It's about joy, contentment. It's about meaning, uh, a meaningful life. For our happiness, it's got an impact. Um, our happiness is across four areas. Us as humans have four dimensions or four levels, four areas of health or four areas of happiness. These four, and what the kids out there, make a note of these four letter words, is our physical, our mental, our emotional and social, and our spiritual so for the physical it's the body we've got to look after our body look after our health nutrition hydration so forth we have to look after our mental learn new things um, be aware of how our uh, mind is thinking do meditation and those kind of things for our emotional and social it's about feelings and being aware of what we feel and regulating our feelings and for our social it's about our relationships about love and for the spiritual, it's about our soul. So these are the four dimensions. They're all super connected and an imbalance in any one of them has an impact in the others. And what's really important is making sure that we look after all four of those areas because they all four work together. And as I mentioned, an imbalance in one impacts the others. So things like stress, 
fear, anxiety. These are things which can impact any one of those four levels or four dimensions. And when the, um, they're impacted, what it causes is it causes stress hormones to be released into our body. These stress hormones you may have heard of as um, cortisol or adrenaline. And what happens is they get released into our body. And if we're not moving those stress kept, um, hormones out of our system and we let them build up over time, it's going to cause us serious problems in all four of those areas. Loss of appetite, not sleeping, not being able to think, confusion, um, lack of joy in life, not being connected with people and not having a, a sense of purpose or meaning. So it's really important that we address or deal with our stress. So those four dimensions were one of the four concepts I wanted to share. So that's one to remember. The next four I want to share are in order to remove those stress hormones out of our system, what we want to do is to flood our system and top up our system with the happy chemicals. And some of these you may have heard of, and they help us feel good. They are dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins. And they spell out the acronym DOSE. So what we really want is a daily dose of these. Each of these chemicals has a particular function that it does. And when these chemicals are low, they have a particular impact on us. And the similarities you'll see is there's loneliness, there's depression, there's withdrawal, uh, less you know, social um, interaction, less trust, less drive. So all of those things occur when these chemicals are less. And what we want to do is boost those chemicals up. And the way we can boost those chemicals up is through the use of various things that are in our control, whether it's eating chocolate, dark chocolate, honey, spicy food, exercise, um, music, and all of those things will be having today. And all of the activities we've got going on today impact on one or more of those four dimensions and help boost our levels. And we keep them topped up and we're able to deal with the stresses of life and um, stay happier. Fantastic. So I'm going to share another story with you. And this is the story of the seven wonders of the world. A teacher asked the students in her class to write down the seven wonders of the world. And I'd ask you the same question. What are the seven wonders of the world? And you might be putting down answers like the Great Wall of China, Niagara Falls, Taj Mahal, Eiffel Tower, uh, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, the Grand Canyon, all of these kind of things, and narrowing it down to wonder, is it the seven new wonders of the world? Is it seven of the ancient wonders of the world? What are my seven wonders of the world? And the kids wrote down, and they came up with a list of seven, which they shared, and they were very much like those, the Taj Mahal, Niagara Falls, and so forth. And the teacher saw there was one young girl who was sitting quietly, really pensive, really thinking, and the teacher went up to the young girl and asked, you know, are you okay? I, you know, are you struggling with the assignment? And the young girl said, there's so many to choose from. I don't know what to choose. And so the teacher said, why don't you share what you have on your list with us? And so and the, maybe the class can help. So the young girl read out and said, for me, the seven wonders of the world are to see, to smell, to hear, to taste, to touch, to love and to laugh. And with that, the whole class went silent. And this is what introduces us to the key to long-lasting happiness. It's gratitude. Being thankful for what we already have in our lives. Counting the blessings of what we already have. And with those happy chemicals, gratitude is bumping up most of those um, happy chemicals that we discussed. So gratitude is thinking about what do we already have in our lives? Not what we want and what we're after, but what do we already have? Counting our blessings. So I'd like you to just take a moment to reflect. What do you already have in your life that you can be grateful for? Right now, what do you already have? And just share those on um, the chat channel. I'll share a few of the ones that I have. 
I'm grateful for water that I can drink straight away and stay hydrated. I'm grateful for food and nutrition to help me stay healthy. I'm grateful for this wonderful day that we've got with loads of people coming together to support this wonderful cause. I'm grateful for the sunshine. What other things are you grateful for? Ah, we have family and friends. Absolutely. Grateful for family, grateful for friends, and also grateful for strangers. Good health. Absolutely. Grateful for good health. Mother, water, wow. Health and happy family. And this is from one of the kids who's sharing it. Health, shelter, family, love. Brilliant. So it's absolutely right. It's one of those things. It's, the, and all of these map onto those four dimensions. Our health, our family, our relationships, something, a roof over our heads, food on, our, uh, on, our, on the table for us to eat, all of these four things are the things which help with our, um, it, it are the things we already have. And when we don't have those, that's when we realize what we're missing. Um, and in this lockdown, we can feel some of that, but we can look and think, actually, what, do we, what have we gained from this? What do we have? So that's uh, what we have there. So I'd like to tell you a little bit more about what gratitude is. So gratitude is a habit of the heart. It's what shifts us very quickly from being feeling low to feeling happier. It amplifies the good in our life. It amplifies the good that we already have. It um, opens up our vision. We're able to see more things. We're able to have more of a positive outlook. It increases our happiness. Um, it gives us life satisfaction. It gives us an optimistic outlook. Um, it's not a half glass full. It's not a half glass empty. It's thankful that we have a glass and it reduces our stress. So these are some of the things that gratitude does for us. I'll share a little bit more on some of the science. So already shared, it reduces the stress. For kids and for adults, practicing gratitude activates the learning centers in the brain. So you're able to learn better and remember things better. Um, it improves our sleep. It reduces our stress. It improves our resilience, our ability to bounce back from illness or any setback we have in life, to be able to bounce back quicker and stronger. Um, it improves our social connections. And um, a whole host of um, benefits across those four dimensions of the mind, body, spirit, and emotional. So that's the benefits. But the one I want to draw, uh, draw your attention to where the science has done it is read out this one. A letter of gratitude reduced the feeling of hopelessness in 88% of suicidal um, patients and increased the levels of optimism in 94% of them. So these people are on the brink of suicide and 88% of them got hope. And remember, we talked about hope earlier and it increased optimism in 94%. So gratitude is one of those things which can turn a life around. It can save a life. So it's so important and special for us to share that. Gratitude helps us heal. It um, helps us stop feeling deflated and it gives us hope. At the moment, we see the rainbows being used for, um, say, the NHS, and it's the shape of an arc. And if you remember that shape of an arc and you remember the acronym ARC, the A is amplifying the good in our lives, R is rescuing us, lifting us up, saving us, and C is for connection, being connected with people, feeling that sense of connection. Because when we think about gratitude, we don't only think about the gift, but we think about where that gift has come from, who's given us that gift. I'm gonna play a very short song, it's by, um, Nemo, um, Empty Hands, On Gratitude, and I'm going to play it for just two or three minutes, not the full song, but what I'd like to do is start writing in the comments 
the people you're grateful for. And then I'll switch to another theme in a moment. So the people that you're grateful for, if you could write that in the comments, please. So people that you're grateful for. So as you're sharing, as you're sharing that, I'm gonna hi play. Yep. So the music's playing the background. Hopefully you can hear it. Hopefully you can hear me speaking as well. So the people I'm grateful for are um, Girpa and Nirav of the Help Vera Now campaign for giving me the opportunity to support this campaign. I'm grateful for Radhika Maya for setting up this wonderful extra extravaganza day. Extra extravaganza day. I'm grateful for all of you guys being on this session and giving me the energy to share and giving me the opportunity to share and for your inputs. I'm grateful for my parents, I'm grateful for my family, I'm grateful for my friends, I'm grateful for my community, I'm grateful for the bin men who clear up the bin every week, I'm grateful for um, the police for keeping us safe, I'm grateful for the government for the things they're doing to help us through this, I'm grateful for the doctors and the nurses and all the people in the medical professions and elsewhere helping. I'm grateful for every act of kindness that everyone does. I'm grateful for the opportunity that are presented to us. So people that you're grateful for. Great. I like the, so we're getting kids, we're getting family, we're getting friends, we're getting cousins. That's brilliant. Think further outside of the box of the wider circle that you're, that of people you can be grateful for, even strangers who you do not know, who may have given a blood donation, which has helped a family member. Next, think of places you're grateful for. So people was first, now places. I'm grateful for my home. I'm grateful for living in London. I'm grateful for my neighborhood. I'm grateful for the hospitals. I'm grateful for the schools. I'm grateful for the restaurants. I'm grateful for the supermarkets. I'm grateful for the sacred places where we can go for refuge. I'm grateful for all the places which allow us to share the things that we do and to commune and to come together. Brilliant, we've got supermarket, we've got um, acts of goodness, we've got neighbors, we've got frontline workers, brilliant. We've got our home, awesome. So people, places, brilliant. So I'm gonna stop there. The exercise you can continue is to think of things you're grateful for and anything else that fits in there, like the internet, so forth. I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes for a moment. I'm gonna read out um, a quick poem and then um, we'll be finishing um, session there. So this is by Melody Beattie. Gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance Chaos, chaos to order, confusion to clarity. It can turn a meal into a feast, a house into a home, a stranger into a friend. Gratitude makes sense of our past. It brings peace for today and it creates a vision for tomorrow. So the secret to a long lasting life of happiness is gratitude and cultivating all the other virtues. It's health being happy yourself can help others be happy moment to moment having happier moments and thank you for sharing this happy moment together and with that i appreciate and thank and i'm grateful for all of you for taking part my time is up and i would like to say i'm going to hand over now to tina of calm chakra yoga and all of you guys enjoy this fantastic day and remember we want to increase the number of people on the registers so we can increase the chances of matches and save lives. Thank you.